Hi, I'm Mark Murphy, President and CEO of the Green Bay Packers. I'm proud to be a member of the Positive Coaching Alliance's National Advisory Board. Our country's most important resource is our young people. It's up to all of us to do everything we can to keep them safe. A number of recent events have highlighted that more action is needed to protect youth athletes from child abuse. In this video, you'll hear from experts at Positive Coaching Alliance and Kid Power with specific advice for you as an organizational leader about how you can protect your athletes from abuse. I'm Jim Thompson, founder and CEO of Positive Coaching Alliance, a national nonprofit with the mission to develop better athletes, better people. I am Irene Vondersande, founder and executive director of Kid Power. Since 1989, Kid Power's programs and curriculum have reached more than 2 million people of all ages and abilities worldwide, providing them with tools on personal safety and child protection. All the good things that come from sports can be erased if a child is abused. As a youth sports leader, you have the power to establish policies that can keep athletes safe from abusers. Those who would abuse children tend to go where the kids are, places like youth sports. They also tend to stay away from organizations that have a visible and effective policy to protect kids and that report suspected abuse. You cannot identify child predators by how they look. The key is to pay attention to behavior. Predators work hard to develop relationships of trust with kids, families, teams, and youth sports organizations. They often spend more than a year developing these relationships before they do anything that harms a child. Some people think conducting background checks for all coaches and volunteers is enough to protect our kids. Unfortunately, data shows that only 17% of those convicted of child abuse in a youth sports setting would have shown up on a background check. Background checks are absolutely essential and you should do them, but they are not enough. Adopt and publicize a child abuse prevention policy such as the one on Positive Coaching Alliance's website. Let everyone know that in your organization, you will report all suspected abuse to the police. This warns abusers that they are at risk of being caught if they try to abuse children in your organization. Just having this policy is not enough. Post it on your organization's website and take the time to go through it with all coaches and volunteers every season so you will not be faced later with people telling you they did not understand the policy. The more people know about your policy, the more effective it will be at deterring potential abusers. A key part of this policy includes making sure people know how and where to report suspected abuse. Child Help's National Child Abuse Prevention Hotline is available at 1-800-4-A-CHILD. Your child abuse prevention policy should prohibit coaches and volunteers from being alone with individual athletes. Rare exceptions may be made when a child would be put in danger by being left alone. But coaches should immediately call an organization leader when they find themselves in this situation. This rule protects both athletes and coaches. Make sure to educate your players, parents, and coaches about the warning signs of sexual abuse, such as coaches giving individual players special gifts, coaches spending extra time by phone, email, texting, or in person with individual players outside of official practices and games, and coaches telling players not to share their conversations with their parents. A quick way to educate your coaches and parents about these warning signs is to show them the short PCA Kid Power Child Abuse Prevention video that accompanies this one that is focused on what parents and coaches can do. Encourage the parents in your organization to come to you with concerns and let them know they will be heard and taken seriously. Then be ready to have direct conversations with any of the coaches in question. Hey Mike, do you have a second? Sure, what's going on? Um, I had some parents come and talk to me and they said you'd been spending some extra time with their son one-on-one -on -one outside of practice. And I just want to check in and see if that was happening. Sure, so Jeremy's been showing a ton of potential in practice lately. And he came to me with hopes that I would work with him on a few specific parts of his game. 
Do you remember at the start of the year when we went over our policy for our league and we said that we couldn't have coaches spending time alone with players? Okay, yeah, and, and I never meant to do anything that would make his parents uncomfortable. I understand the league policy. I was really just trying to give him some extra help afterwards. Yeah. You know, it actually has to apply all the time, and I really appreciate you wanting to put in that extra work with him. If you could just ask one of the teammates to stick around or a co-coach or maybe his parents to observe, then we'd be all good. Okay, I was just trying to give him some extra help, and I never meant to make his parents uncomfortable. Uh, so thanks for approaching me about this. No problem. Thanks for being open. When you as a leader have the moral courage to confront a coach after a concern is voiced, it sends a signal that you are there to protect athletes. In this role play, you saw the leader approach the coach privately in a calm and respectful way. Parents need to know their concerns have been acted upon. Follow up quickly with parents to let them know what specific steps have been taken. This will help assure parents that their children are safe in your organization. We wish we lived in a world where this video was not necessary. But we know that child abuse in youth sports is a reality. Please join us in doing everything we can to protect our kids.